How is everybody doing once again? Gonna get into a short and sweet one. Going over turtle soup model number two, which is gonna be the high time frame fair value gap equals the low time frame turtle soup. Right, you can keep in mind all of your market maker models and your breakers and everything that we've had in previous videos. Right, obviously, if we're gonna have a breakaway gap, we're gonna have a breakaway gap. So we don't need to retrace, you know, to a certain fair value gap. We sometimes don't even have to retrace to the fair value gap if we have an SMT, you know, on a correlated asset. All right, that's what we're going to keep in mind with every time we go over a model or just anything turtle soup wise, we need to reinforce every base turtle soup concept. All right, and, and if you're questioning what I mean by base turtle soup concept, all right, a lot of them are in your face on the screen, but we have you know, I have a couple videos, right? I try and put as much as I can in each video because I don't want to, you know, be the person that says, oh, go watch this video, right? But there's just so much that if I said the same stuff every video, right, it, it wouldn't make for a good video because there's so many little key points within each little thing. But once you fully grasp it, right, they all kind of just mesh together into almost like a, a, a Play-Doh-esque sculpture that's just beautiful or whatever or you know a music piece that is just beautifully engineered and right has a beautiful you know melody to it and just sounds wonderful right or even you know what whatever like a rap song that's just fucking whatever amazing all right anyway <clears throat> with reinforcing the concept obviously we're going to be asking why is the high time frame even important big orders I mean, I don't know if it's obvious, but right, it should be obvious that big orders are going to be higher time frame. So that's when we're going to move and displace a lot quicker from right high time frame key areas. Nobody in the right mind is putting a million, 10 million, or even a million dollars right in a trade or in the market on the one minute time frame. All right, our high time frame bias equals our low time frame entries depending on the high time frame bias. Without the high time frame, the low time frame would not be high probability. There'd, no, there'd be no point in trading the low time frame if you couldn't form a high time frame bias. So what time are you trading? Is it the monthly, the weekly, the daily chart? Obviously, you can be an intraday trader, day trader, swing trader, monthly, or you know, a weekly one shot, one kill trader. Or you could trade, I mean, shit, all of them on different accounts, right? Whatever you want to do. Obviously, you have to look at all high time frames, or all time frames, right? If you're just looking, you know, to swing weeklies or dailies, you don't have to zoom in as close because it doesn't matter. Unless you're trying to catch a perfect entry, right? So either way, you're going to have to zoom down to the low time frame, at least a one or four hour, right? So, do we have a strong weekly profile? What is our institutional order flow showing us? Do we have an obvious high time frame draw on liquidity, right? Do we have an obvious high time frame order flow that is bullish or is it bearish, right? Are we delivering bullishly or bearishly from PD arrays, right? Which ones are being dis respected, disrespected? Where are we within the high time frame range? Where is the engineer where is the engineered liquidity? Is it above, below? Do we have high resistance liquidity runs above or below? Is there a high time frame market maker model? Note our open, high, low close of our four hour candle. Alright, obviously for turtle soups we're gonna be souping the bullish breakers when bearish and the bearish breakers when bullish. Bullishly, obvious high time frame fair value gaps with the resting liquidity above equal a low time frame breakaway gap after swept into. And that's usually what we would like to see, right? Either from a high time frame discounted FEG breaker order block, right? We want to see resting liquidity and an obvious gap and then leave a low time frame breakaway gap, even, right? A high time frame breakaway gap. But if we leave a high time frame breaker right gap, I mean, you can shit your pants or bet money that, you know, it's going to be a low time frame breakaway gap as well. Right, with the range created, we're going to want to see us sweep the range low into a high time frame fair value gap. 
reverse two and through the previous range, right? To 50% of the range, then to range high. The example we're going to go over this week was literally, I mean, excuse me, the example that we're going over was literally this week. So just chart, right? I took this short. It's pretty easy short, right? After creating a range, right? We I originally was thinking we'd sweep the range low, right? After manipulating up, we looked like we were going to sweep the range high, which is what we did. SMT'd with NQ. And, right, it, it just so clearly was a fake run up, get in short, and, right, catch it all the way down to the London low, or Asian low. I can't really exactly remember. But we'll get into the example. Kind of keep this short and sweet. It's just a model, right? You can... You don't even have to listen to me. I mean, you can copy paste this and just go look on your own chart, right? That because it that's all it's gonna take. You're gonna have to put your pen and pencil to paper, right? Or hand and keyboard to Notion, right? Get your notes going and look at your own chart. You're never gonna understand anything if you don't put the hours and time in your own chart. And that's simply right, that's that's no shortcut there. You're not gonna find a shortcut or anything, you know, like an indicator or something that's gonna make you, right, see order flow or see when we're reversing or just see anything like that, right? You're gonna get cooked if you just don't ever try and chart on your own and, right, just look for cheap, simple routes. Putting in the work is how you're gonna, you know, get better and be able to see this stuff on your own. Let's get into the chart, get into the example on ES, right, and get y'all through with this, you know, pretty informative video packed into a pretty short time. Alrighty, so hopping into the chart, we got ES, the one hour time frame. We can zoom out, see that we're bullish, right, creating swing lows here, building up low resistance liquidity, but forming SMTs at well, as well at high time frame lows. All right. So we zoom in. We have a huge accumulation through Monday going into Tuesday. London didn't do anything, so we come into New York Open. And what do we see? We see it's still ranging, right? We got another hour or two till open. We go one candle, another. So now we have a market structure shift, as you like to say. I don't, I don't even use that term. But you, see, you, you have a market structure shift to the upside. Go to the 15 minute. It looks like we're going to take this high and maybe even keep running, right? With my original analysis, I wanted to see this chop, take this low, maybe react it to the breaker down here, right? Sweep this low maybe, and then continue us higher after accumulating higher time frame, manipulating, and then distributing. Looking back and how it played out, it makes, you know, obviously a lot more sense because that's how it played out. But we still were able to catch it by not marrying a bias and also staying confident in the right chart we're seeing. Not getting scared thinking price is going to keep escalating higher. Going to a even lower time frame. See us chop around and then take the high. As we were taking the high, NQ was not. So we have our high time frame fair value gap. Right, with a fair value gap here, resting above into our breaker. Didn't quite reach the breaker, but we did reach the FEG. So after we deliver into the FEG, sweeping this old high and having an SMT with NQ and uh, YM, well, YM may have, I'm not sure, uh, but definitely with ES, right? We take the high into the fair value gap. Seeing that we're delivering bullishly but not have yet came back to the order block. We didn't see any four or one hour FEGs, right? So after accumulating and sweeping the high, a 
that's where we would like us to see re-delivered to. Come into the five minute for an entry. No real 8.30 news it seems. We come into the 9.30 open. Sweep a, a little bit higher, right? Then create a CSID. We wick back up into it, right? You can then set your cell limit there, right? Because we have now swept into the high time frame FEG. You can maybe put your stop at the EQ of the FEG, right? I usually keep mine a bit shorter and then I'll just re enter. But especially with something like this, right? You don't even have to have right your stop that low. You can even have it this high because it's such a small stop. This is even better though. We then create equal lows in a breaker. Form a breakaway, or excuse me, right? You see us react to this order block, come down, react to the order block breaker again, and then leave an FEG. After delivering from this breaker, right with this wick, open, high, low, close. We then keep delivering lower. We see us sweep this high, right, into our BPR. Right? After creating a breaker lower, and you may see this into this BPR and be like, oh, we need to deliver higher or whatever. With us sweeping this and having this SMT, there's no reason for us to re deliver past this high until. Right? I saw this low, but obviously we pushed lower, so you can't catch every move. Right? We push lower past PDL and. Even with this, right, I would have aimed for this low to begin with. 2.7, right, maybe could have aimed for this low or maybe just got a couple extra ticks out of it. <clears throat> but, right, my stop is usually a bit smaller than that. Um, just depending on the trade. 30 ticks is usually around where the stop is. But we can see how we delivered to the FEG. Right, higher time frame. Swept the highs, SMT'd into the breaker. All right, you can even look at this FEG and then say the BPR. Or even say the Reaper. I mean, I don't care what PDA you call it, seriously. All right, I just want you to see how we're delivering, when we're delivering, and why we're delivering. And then also we can see how we delivered back in to our order block and then we took longs on NQ as well and then we just chopped around all day I'm pretty sure for like an hour it took forever to hit TP on the longs I think but or no, I think wasn't too bad of a chop yeah and then we had the 3 p.m. but I didn't hold all day but see I knew we'd come back above the high with this but You can see this four hour FEG, right? This is where we SMT'd with ES. All within the four hour candles, right? We SMT at the high, deliver buy side. We take short on NQ with the SMT, stop at the high. And that's why my uh, stop was so short, I remember, because obviously we got the SMT. So I am got my stop a couple ticks above the high. Then we delivered to the FEG, take some here. After we delivered to that FEG, right, only looking at this piece of price action, we then have another high time frame FEG, right? See, we sweep all the lows, right? Form a low time, well, depends how you look at it, right? We have our rejection block, then we have this low that liquidates the rejection block, right? And even though it's green, can be seen as an order block come back to the order block and then deliver higher 
right? Call it whatever you want to. See how we deliver to the tick. All right, and then deliver higher. And that's two models back to back, right? And the only reason I ended up taking this short is because I knew that we had no reason to keep expanding higher. We formed the SMT, easiest short of our life, wait a couple minutes, right? And you see this even 15 minute breaker, we don't close through, come into this FEG or maybe create equal lows. Yeah, create equal lows. Maybe SMT into this FEG and then deliver higher. All right, so we took short and then right longs back to back, same day. Just happened to get some volatility, right? Can't remember how long I held this. I think it was till PDEQ. Pretty sure, right? But that's two back to back model twos. Let's go over the requirements one more time to say and show why it's back to back model twos. So obviously, with all of our turtle soup concepts in mind, we kept the high time frame in mind, had our high time frame bias, which equaled to a low time frame entry, right? Our, our bias, we wanted to see us retrace to the order block fair value gap on NQ to begin with, right? We started accumulating, manipulating to the upside, higher time frame. So what did we do? We swept the high, SMT, gave us our confirmation to go lower. We entered short then came to our original entry long that we were looking for, right? And then had good longs. We didn't get to stay in them the whole day, but, right, we got the initial part of it back to PDEQ on NQ. So with that being said, right, ES had our high time frame FEG model to the upside after that accumulation manipulation, in, and that manipulation was into the high time frame fair value gap outside of our high time frame range. Order flow was bullish high time frame, so that's why we were looking for longs. But after, right, a high time frame range on the four hour, we saw that we needed to then sweep the highs to deliver us lower. We saw where the engineer, where the liquidity was engineered, right, as in after that SMT and we left equal highs on ES and then came into the low, had an SMT at the low came into the order block on NQ, we seen that there was equal highs above on NQ, and that high that we took short was an easy draw on liquidity. We didn't really see any higher time frame market maker models, right? Just because with the examples we've been having, uh, there's no, there's been no true, true market maker models. Um, kind of been struggling and just with the medium lower time frame one time time range ones time frame range ones whatever um right we looked at our open high low close of our one and four hour candle going open high low then close continuing on to the next candle we saw how we had a bullish breaker Right, we saw, excuse me, we saw how we were bullish, right, but we accumulated. And that man, that accumulation, right, led us into us being high time frame bearish for the retracement, right? So then we were low time frame bullish. So what did we do? Low t Our high time frame bearish for the retracement, low time frame bullish. We took the low time frame bullish, shorted it shorted into the reversal of low time frame order flow swapping from bullish to bearish aligning with the high time frame bearish into the order flow feg excuse me into the order block feg then continued higher we saw that there was less resting liquidity in the feg and then above where we had the smt we saw how we had a range created right we didn't sweep the range low into the high time feg instead what we did is we swept the range high right into the feg reversed through to the range low right now range low back to range high okay like i said the example was this week all the notes just go chart see if you can find some more on your own you should be able to find 
a million of these motherfuckers. All right, and I hope everybody, you know, got something out educational out of this, right? Got something to add to your arsenal because it's really, really all of these models you should just be seeing as turtle soups. But you know, I use the models because the models help me, right? Open my eyes to almost see how, right? Every turtle soup leads to a reversal and like where the turtle soups are evident and obvious. Um. But the models, you know, you don't have to go specifically live by the model, right? Because you can see model one, two, right? in the same thing as we sweep into the FEG, we saw the CSID enter on the OB, and then, right, it'll deliver us lower. Okay, so if anybody has any questions, as always, leave them in the comments. You can always join the Discord, ask questions there. Everybody's very welcoming, right? Pretty good community. I like everybody in there trying to grow got a hundred members which i'm excited about I'll do a video about that and uh 200 subscribers as well but yeah i hope y'all have a great night great week y'all have a good one